Welcome to 20 hidden macOS features that will seriously up the way that you use your Mac device. Let's go. Did you know that you can easily merge the contents of two identically named folders in a single location? So normally when you try to drag and drop a folder with the same name into the same location as another folder with the same name, you'll be greeted with a prompt that allows you to either stop the transfer or replace the folder altogether. So the trick is to hold the option key as you do it. When you do so, you'll get an additional prompt that allows you to instead merge the folders together. For a lot of us, battery naming files can be a very handy thing for file organization purposes. And these days, it's actually a really easy thing to do straight from the right click contextual menu within Mac OS. You just select your group of files, then right click and select rename. From here, you'll get the option of either replacing text, adding text, or even applying a format such as a predetermined name, followed by an automatically incrementing counter. If you're someone like me who loves to use templates so that you don't have to start from scratch every time you create a new document, you can actually use a method called stationary pad, which will do all the heavy lifting for you. So just find the file you want to use as a template, then right click it and select get info. From here, enable the stationary pad checkbox. Now, whenever you double click to open this file, macOS will make a duplicate for you, allowing you to make changes without messing with the original template document. It's a pretty universal shortcut to use command or control X to cut something and then Command or Control V to paste it, effectively moving that file instead of duplicating it. Except this doesn't actually work on a Mac when transferring files. Instead, if you copy a file as per usual by using Command C, but then use Option Command V to paste the file, it will actually move the file rather than copying it. Now, whilst I love the concept of the Mac OS dynamic wallpapers, there are just so few to actually choose from, but with a little bit of time and effort, you can actually create your own. Now, the first step is to find a set of images, 24 to be exact, that will represent each hour of the day. Then after you name each according to the hour of day you'd like it to represent, so from one all the way to 24, you can then upload them to a website called Dynamic Wallpaper Club. Once you do and it's gone through and processed your images, you'll then be able to download a particular file that stores all of that information information, which you can then set as your dynamic wallpaper as per the usual method. As someone who loves customization, I'm a big fan of how surprisingly easy it is to change the Mac OS icons to whatever I want. All you do is open the image file you like the look of in the preview app, then tap Command C to copy it. Now, right click the icon you want to change, then select Get Info, click on the icon and hit the shortcut Command V to paste in your new icon. And that's it. If you want to organize your dock a little by grouping various icons together, then open up the terminal application and copy in the command on screen right now. I'll also leave it down in the description below. Once you've pasted it in, click enter. Your dock will disappear for a moment, then it'll reappear with a spacer tile on the right. You can then use this same prompt to add in as many spaces as you like, and then use them to group together your icons. The menu bar is that universal space at the top of your Mac that allows you to quickly access a variety of shortcuts and also check on various status updates about your computer. If you want to reorganize it though, simply hold command and drag the icons around. That way you can have them in an order that makes more sense for your particular needs. But if you're someone like me who has a stack of icons up there that you rarely use, but you still want them open and accessible for the occasional times that you do use them, well, you can actually hide them using an app called Vanilla. Simply download and install the app and you'll then be able to move as many icons as you so desire behind this collapsible menu. And if you upgrade to the pro version, you can actually hide them completely until you quit the app. So with all of the recent announcements coming in at WWDC, it's clear that Mac OS is getting more and more refined as an operating system. But that said, our Macs can still build up deficiencies over time. And the fact of the matter is, our Mac computers still need ongoing maintenance. And that's where today's video sponsor, Clean My Mac X, comes in. This software helps you to stay on top of all of the apps and services installed on your Mac, as well as all of your permissions, which means you can figure out which programs have access to your microphone or your camera, and it just gives you more control over your apps and their files, therefore helping you to free up space and speed up your computer. Now, probably their most popular feature is called Smart Scan, and this helps you to find logs and cache files that are no longer needed on your device, and it gets rid of them, which keeps your Mac clean. So I'll leave a link below to where you can get a free trial for your Mac. And if you like the product, then the upgrade is just $35 annually. Scroll bars are hidden by default on Mac OS and only become visible whenever a user starts to scroll any given page. If you're someone who finds this somewhat confusing, it's actually really easy to change this default setting. Head to system preferences, then general, and change the show scroll bar setting to always. Now, more often than not, I actually prefer to use my computer to read your lovely YouTube comments, but when it comes to replying, 
I'll admit that I do love to use a sneaky emoji, which just perfectly captures what I want to say, but in one character. Well, did you know that on a Mac, it's actually super easy to insert all of your favorite emojis wherever you're typing, simply by hitting the shortcut Control Command Space. This will open up a dedicated emoji window ready for all of your emoji typing needs. Now, most of us probably know that the shortcut Command Q will quit any active app that is currently open. But if you're wanting to quit a huge collection of active apps, then this can be somewhat tiresome. Well, instead, try holding Command and Tab, and then as you cycle through each of the open apps by tapping Tab, you can then quit the apps here instead by tapping Q. If you wanna hide them, then tap H. Simple. If you're not already using keyboard shortcuts, then you absolutely should start doing so. Open up the system preferences, then navigate to the keyboard section, and then the text section. From here, you can set up any number of shortcuts that, when typed, will be replaced with your text of choice. A really handy one is to set up two at symbols to be replaced with your primary email of choice. If you've ever found yourself locked out of your computer for whatever reason, don't fret, there is a solution. To get this solution to work, we need to enter recovery mode. To enter this, turn off your Mac, and then once it's off, press and hold Command-R, and then press the power button. Keep holding Command-R until you see a progress bar appear, and then your Mac will boot into recovery mode. From here in the menu bar, click Utilities, and then Terminal. In this terminal window, type Reset Password, and then hit Enter. Now close the terminal window, and you'll find the Reset Password tool, where you'll see a list of user accounts on your Mac. Keep in mind, if you reset the password for your account, you'll also have to set a new one for every other user as well. If you've got speakers or headphones plugged into your Mac or a microphone or all of the above, you can actually really quickly switch audio source inputs and outputs from the menu bar. Simply hold Option when clicking the volume icon in the menu bar, and this will then bring up a list of audio inputs and outputs. This will save you from having to dig into the system preferences every time you want to change your audio source. Did you know there's actually a few hidden window resizing tricks that you can use on Mac OS? We all know that you can just click and drag any corner of a select window to move that corner in, right? Well, if you hold shift as you drag a corner in, it will maintain its current aspect ratio. Or if you hold option, then the corner you've selected and the opposite corner will both proportionally resize at the same time. And finally, if you hold shift and option at the same time, you can combine both features. Now I admit I am a little bit of a new schooler, if you will, when it comes to searching for files on my Mac in that I use Spotlight rather than the Finder, but there are actually a couple of handy tricks that you can use to improve the Spotlight method even further. So after you've typed your file name and selected a file, if you hold the command key, the file location will conveniently pop up at the bottom of the file preview. Or if you type command and then R, the file location will actually open in a new finder window. If you're browsing the web and you wanna save just a small amount of time when you're wanting to navigate to a new URL, try typing command L. This will immediately highlight the URL bar for you, saving you a swipe and a click. We all know and no doubt use command H all the time to hide our currently active window. But what if you wanna do the opposite and hide every other window and clean up your workspace and keep just the active window open? Well, instead type Command Option H and there you go. And finally, I learned this one quite a while ago, but I was blown away with how simple and effective it is. If you've got an application that has multiple windows open, you can quickly cycle between the windows by using the shortcut Command Grave. I genuinely use this all the time. And that's it. Now, I know I normally focus on Android related content on this channel, but if you'd like to see more Mac related content, then definitely let me know down in the comments below. Aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.